Hello, Ron. We are today here with Dr. Jens Wehner. Hello. And he wrote a PhD thesis on German fighter, on the Fighterwaffe, the Jagdwaffe in the Second World War. And I had a video previously about Panzer Aces and that they didn't consider themselves Aces at all. Now, the question is, of course, was this the same for the Luftwaffe and, and all these Aces we talk about? Is this maybe also hogwash or is there some truth to it? So were they, did they consider themselves as aces, asses, asse in the, in the Luftwaffe mm -hmm. or, or was it like with the Panzers? Yeah, there, there is a big difference between the Panzers and the Luftwaffe, I would say. They consider themselves as experten, so experts. So the German talk was not aces. Of course, they knew the word ace and sometimes maybe they used it. But mostly they use the, the, the word ex, expert. Yeah? So let's say a high claiming fighter pilot with 500 kills was a top expert or something like this, you know. And the thing with the yeah. five kills? Didn't really matter that much, especially in the later stages of the war. Yeah? What mattered for them was the, what were the uh, Medals and orders, yeah. So like the Knight's Cross also, and this changed over the war. How much kills would you have to had uh, to get a Knight's Cross or Iron Cross also? Yeah, I think mostly it was three kills for the second class Iron Cross. I don't know for the first class Iron Cross. Maybe maybe also changed over the war. And the Knight's Cross in the first stage of the war in the European war, I would say twenty kills. At the Eastern Front, sometimes in the middle stage of the war, you have guys with 100 kills and they didn't have a Knight's Cross. I think Hartmann, maybe maybe we have to, to put something yeah, in capture. Uh, uh, capture, yeah. But I think it was 150 kills when he got his Knight's mm -hmm. Cross. Yeah, so really high toll. Yeah. And, and in propaganda terms, was the term Fliegerasse used? I don't know for sure. Maybe sometimes, yeah. Maybe it changed. But they consider themselves as experts. Also, this was internally they yeah, called themselves yeah, experts. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's interesting. And and the so the term Fliegerasse probably also was used in First World War or something. Because I, 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 I always kind of heard mm, mm, so five kills mm. makes an ace. Yeah, this is the this is the Anglo-American reception. Ah, of okay. The, yeah. Yeah, and maybe this is true for the Germans in World War One. I'm not an expert on World War One, but I would say, of course, they knew all the stories from World War One. So maybe this played a mm. role in their head. But mostly, it was experts, and it depend really on the on the front where you were flying. So I would say, in the on the Eastern Front, with five kills, you weren't called an ace. Okay. Yeah, because you had squadrons and groups with a lot of pilots with higher claim rates. Yeah. So on the, so generally on the Eastern Front, the air war was was um, easier, or in which way was it different? That uh, that there was a that the kill claims didn't count as much. At least we can say that the that the fighters of the Germans had much higher claim rates as on the Western Front, and if you look at the official losses of the Soviet air forces they correlate with this. But this doesn't mean that the numbers of the German experts or pilots are correct. Yeah, I tried to calculate it for my dissertation and I, I had a result of a quota of 1 to 1.8. Meaning for 1.8 claims they did, one was real. It's yeah. still pretty, pretty it's still, high. It's still pretty good. Yeah, I would say. So let's say one to two to make it more simple. Could be also better at some point of the time. Yeah. But uh, you have the same claim rates, I would say, uh, against the Western allies or even better. They were more exact against the Western allies. Let's say it like this. Yeah. And uh, recent, um, recent research from others, not from mine, uh, they they are really dealing with soul pilots. And it seemed that if you look at the German aces, there were really different uh, pilots with different overclaiming rates. Yeah, so, so you have some aces that they are really exact with their numbers, quite exact, where you can say maybe 80% or 90% of their claims are correct. And then you have aces 
um, where you have to say, mm, maybe that's not so true. I, I think I read in the book of Christa Bergström, he, he mentioned no name, but he said he knew a German ace with over 200 claims, so a really high-ranking ace or expert, and in reality had only 30 or 40. So this was also possible. So yeah, we don't know because the pilots were really different. But in the end, if you try to get... Um, an estimation, which is the claim rate at the Eastern Front, I would say 1 to 2, 1 to 1.5, maybe that's a real figure, yeah. So, and, and going back now mm. to the fighter versus mm. panzer aces, so from what I have seen, because there were also some, some people that talked about this, like, like uh, armor guys, they say they wouldn't say it makes no sense to have a panzer ace because... Well, in the Panzer you have a crew and, and the Germans stated in their manual in Verbatim that the fate of the tank and the whole crew is dependent on everyone working together. Whereas with a, with a fighter pilot, of course, you have a wingman, but in the plane itself, you are alone. So therefore, the expert or ace mm -hmm. makes way more sense. Mm -hmm. But still, what we should not forget, a point that Phil always makes is um, war is a team effort because tactics... Let's say you can't do tactics alone, but generally you need for tactics, you need, you need a group, you need a formation, and then really tactics start to work. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this is something um, which I think computer games to a certain degree might get people wrong. But I also remember, and I, I must state it here, that because um, some people claimed in my comments that computer games are responsible for for these panzer aces and all the ace discussion and no <laughs> because i know because i grew up with computer games and there were books written that were older than the computer games and there were already the ace discussions so not this is not coming from computer games it might be enforced or something but you can look back and the ace discussions and everything is be before computer games and it's it's made may, i think in some cases to sell books some some maybe and some maybe mm. are some wrong attribution of stuff mm. yeah i mean if you look at the wehrmacht then you have really different systems bureaucratic bureaucratical and career systems with the fighter pilots and the so-called panzer aces because the panzer aces had no bureaucratical system with their kills this was just an yeah let's say like a battle report yeah when Oh, we won the battle. Ah, yeah, and we killed 40 tanks or something like this. So, they, um, but this was done on company or battalion level. Yeah, maybe, maybe they were. I think in the end they were really get together and calculated with from the Herr Ost. You know, they they needed this number, so they played a role. But this was not really systematically um, collected and calculated. Main difference to the fighters, where they mm -hmm. had really a bureaucratical system. To try to prove their kills, yeah, with, with witnesses, eyewitnesses, and so on, and reports had to be written, and then maybe you have to present the wreckage of the enemy airplane, also. Then, yeah, this was really a, a thing, and so you see the main difference for the Panzer Aces. This was not really important, um, and for the because they got their careers like the higher ranks or. Orders and medals like the Knights Cross, mostly not for their kills, the Panzer Aces, mm. but the fighters did. Yeah, if you had a, a level of kills, then in general, one could say you were um, available for the Knights Cross or something like this. So this really mattered for the fighter pilots. And, and of course, we need to address, because some people in the previous video with Roman Tepperl pointed out like, yeah, but what about the kill rings on the guns? Yeah, I mean... You can look at all the look at all the the photos you can find of anti tank guns of, of panthers and then you look how many have actually kill rings, and this was basically we stated in the video but some people couldn't hear or didn't want to hear some ace uh, some crews some commanders recorded them and some put on the kill rings and some didn't and you should also not forget that nearly all or a lot of the images you see especially good ones are usually made by the propaganda companies. So you don't actually know if they painted the rings there just for the trot or not. Yeah, and, and if, you, if you mentioned Roman Töppel, and I know also another German historian who talked to a lot of um, 
SS tank man crews, um, they they both say they didn't know their own claims. And this would this is quite unusual if it was so important for them. So this is really, I would say, a propaganda after war construction, something like this. Maybe you can link a German video I will do on my channel. Mm -hmm where Roman Töppel gives an explanation about this in German only, but maybe some of the viewers are able to understand German or with the subtitles or whatever, because he talked really to some of the most famous tankers and they, yeah, sometimes they didn't even know how much claims they should have, you know, but in, in some books, especially in English, there are claim lists or so, kill lists, whatever. So I would say if it comes to the Panzerwaffe, As, it, as I said, of course, this played a role for the success in, in a battle. Why not? Of course, how much enemies you killed. But it was more or less, let's say, the, tact the tactical success to yeah. beat the enemy, to, to, to be the ruler over the battlefield and so on. And this was also the main reason to get orders like the Knight's Cross also. Yeah. I think Roman Tuppel pointed this out. And I would say, as, as somebody who did a lot of research to the fighter pilots, This was really a difference to the fighter pilots. And what the people are doing, they are doing the fighter pilot style over the Panzerwaffe. Yeah. yeah, and this I think this is a mistake. Yeah. I don't know how it was with the Allied tankers. Maybe they had a kill claim system. I don't know. But with the Germans, it was not the case in this in this particular reason. Well, what, what, what is an interesting mm. point that was brought up, uh, I think, in the comment section, because there's also good things in the comment section. Usually we rant about it, but for all those people who make good comments, that a lot of people probably noted that they didn't want to know because they know a lot of times that the other guys were killed or something. So that, that, that didn't, I think one person specifically noted that I think he talked to his grandfather or his father and asked, yeah, how many tanks you shot or, or, or destroyed? And he said, it's nothing you want to take, um, want to keep track of because this was people that were killed or something. Mm -hmm. So this is also an interesting point to look at the psychologi psychological aspect. And I think Roman also mentioned something that I think he asked one, one famous tanker about it. And he was really upset about it as well. And I think it was related to that. I'm not sure. So I think, I, yeah, I think there's one famous tanker he asked. I think it was Barkman. Uh, you will say in my video which tanker it was uh, who had really angry about asking about his claims yeah because he just said i don't know <laughs> and then the guys were coming and saying or asking how much claims did you have i don't know listen to me i don't know <laughs> yeah, yeah so, I know. Or, or i uh, don't want to know no 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 i yeah it's, it's really possible because there are so much i i had to I had the luck, let's say it like this, to, to talk to a Königstiger tanker who had a long war with the Panzer IV before that and so on. And I think he also didn't knew his yeah, kill, kill list. Yeah. And sometimes. You, you have other things to care in mm -hmm. war, like yeah. surviving, bringing mm -hmm. uh, that your crew yeah. survives, your family, yeah. everything and, else. And the tactical success to beat the enemy, to make them flee, yeah. Yeah, to make them running, and to have military success. And this was also. The thing which the German army gave orders, medals, ranks, whatever for it. Yeah. Yeah, it's also very important to, which I think in movies and also in games is sometimes wrongly portrayed, to win, you not necessarily have to kill the enemy or destroy yeah. it. You have to just drive them off the battlefield, mm. abandon their tanks. I mean, mm. you can see this in Ukraine to a certain degree, with a lot of uh, 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 Russian equipment abandoned. And this also, you, you have to control the battlefield. And for instance, like if you look at my video on the first war artillery tactics and developments, they, they figured out, oh, destroying doesn't actually work, but suppressing is enough. And the thing behind this is that even in the Luftwaffe, they were challenging the German way of fighting with the fighters because it was all about kills and the kill list, the claim list. But in the end, it was not necessarily a military success. So if a German fighter force attacked an um, Allied bomber formation and maybe they shot down some bombers and okay, they had their kills, but afterwards it uh, turned out the bombers bombed their target, this would be a problem. And so you find orders already in 42 for the German fighter pilots 
uh, to turn in combat, to make a maneuver combat, and not to do only claims. And even General Gallant gave an order where he said, the times of the pilots who only add up uh, kills are over. Yeah. So see, even in the German Air Force, this was a little bit, not so much, it's not a strong talk about this or strong paperwork about this, but there are some others who say it's maybe a problem only to watch of the kills of our pilots. Yeah. So the effect, it, 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 is the mission accomplished, yes or no? And it yeah. not necessarily depends on the kills on the enemy. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is also probably a little bit parallel. You, you can be the best guy in a World of Tanks match or in a War Thunder match, but you still you might still lose because your team is not up to scratch because the other team coordinated better. It's pretty similar to that. So kills not always win you the war. No, it's not a math game. Yeah. Okay, then be sure to check out Jens' um, PhD visas. Currently, it's only available in German. Mm -hmm. Yes. And thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye. Bye.